I have been on Craigslist a lot lately. Do you know about Craigslist? It's a free online classified ad that is organized by city and has a database search. So you can find just about anything on there that people are selling. It's kind of like a local online garage sale. I came across an ad not long ago that read, everything must go, trading my old life for something new. She listed everything from clothes to dishes, furniture and wedding crystal to half a box of laundry soap. <laughs> she was done. <laughs> and she didn't want anything to go to waste. In Matthew 24, a man comes up to Jesus and says, Teacher, what good thing must I do in order to get eternal life? Why do you ask me about what is good, Jesus replied. There's only one who is good. If you want to enter life, obey the commandments. Which ones, the man inquired. Jesus replied, do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not give false testimony, honor your father and mother, and love your neighbor as yourself. All these I've kept, the young man said. What do I still lack? Jesus answered, if you want to be perfect, Go, sell your possessions, and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. Now, I don't know what the woman's circumstances were in that ad. Maybe she joined the Peace Corps or was relocated in her job. Maybe she just lost someone that she loved or was diagnosed with something fatal herself. Whatever happened to that woman, she became very clear, very fast, about what was at the core of her life. Her old life no longer fit, and she was transformed somehow, and all of her decisions were stemming from that place. Now, this passage in Matthew that I read would be shocking to those who heard Jesus tell it. It was believed then, as many actually still believe today, that those who prosper have favor in the eyes of God, that God has blessed them with wealth in some special way. The idea of their virtue and their wealth have become intermingled. And I would say that Unitarians, for the most part, do not believe that God plays favorites with the rich or the poor although society and circumstances certainly do. This passage of Matthew has Jesus pointing out, as he so often does, that gaining life, a life of integrity, is not about following the letter of the law. It's not about just doing what was prescribed, not just following the commandments. For each to find his own life, we must also follow the spirit of the law, awake and with intention. Finding our life is not about whether we can check off a list that we've paid our taxes and that we've tithed, although I sincerely advocate that you do both. <laughs> Jesus is instead asking the listener to pay attention to what is at our core, to pay attention to what is at the center of our lives, what idols we might be worshiping that could cause us to lose our lives. Jesus challenges us to determine what is at our core and then make our decisions from there. Sometimes when we have a revelation about what is at our center, pieces of our life no longer fit. And so some things and maybe some behaviors must go. Not because we're running away from who we are, but because we're running toward who we'd like to be. When we have aligned ourselves with our values in this way, each to his own, heaven manifests in this life. I chose the readings this morning from Anne Rand and the story of the, Jesus' anointing, much to Anne Rand's chagrin, I'm sure. <laughs> to highlight a paradox that feels truly real to me. Both readings address the dilemma of wealth and charity, of selflessness, and the role of reason. 
For Rand, we are valuable independent of everyone else. Each person has individual worth. Rand argues against a moral code of altruism because she believes that when we give away our own resources, we devalue ourselves. She fears this slippery slope of a moral code that suggests that there are no boundaries between us and another, between what is ours and what is theirs. Rand argues that we have a right to exist for our own sake, and not merely for the sake of filling a societal or a communal need. She states that we do not need to buy our lives, dime by dime, from those in need. And she's right. If we're seeking redemption in charitable acts, we will forever be disappointed. We cannot buy our lives from those in need. Living an authentic and integrated life from our values and in relationship is the real currency of our lives. And when we spend from that well, we receive a hundredfold in return. But there is no formula or reason prescribed that can determine what amount is right, how much is enough. We have to know ourselves well enough to discover exactly what enough is. Rand also believes that there is no earthly reason for altruism. She says that the whole history of philosophy, no earthly reason has ever been given. And in some sense, she's right. If preservation of the self is the most important thing, if we value ourselves and our family above all, There's no reason to give away all of our resources. If the only prescription for charity is moral obligation, then I guess she's right. Forced charity is not charity at all. Now at All Souls, we model a generosity of giving that is applicable to our daily lives. We ask our members to make a commitment to the church with a pledge to support our annual budget and programs. And then every offering, every service, we give our money away. We make a commitment to keep our community thriving and give a regular opportunity to give those that further our values in the world our charity. And so if charity is a choice, why choose? Rand answers her own question. She is simply not satisfied with the answer. We choose charity because of our faith. We choose to support those causes that promote our values in the world when our faith is at our center. So how much ought we give? How do we decide what's enough? The two readings illustrate the paradox. Yes, we need to value ourselves, and yes, we need to give things of value away. And in my experience, paradox often points me in the direction of the truth, when the answer to an or question is yes. So Rand is right, and so is Jesus. In the story of Jesus' anointing, the disciples want to know why the perfume was not sold to benefit the poor. Why waste her gifts on Jesus when they could be sold for more money? The value of this gift comes not in its maximized distribution, but in the relationship that it creates, the opportunity for real contact. She gives what she has to God. Faith or following the commandments in order to find our life is not about having the money to give. It's about using the gifts that we have. Finding our life comes from the giving of the gift. When we are giving what is most important to us and when it creates an opportunity for relationship.